Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, just confirm with me, just uh, if you can hear me. Loud uh, and clear. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to read from the book of uh, Colossians chapter 3 as we welcome everybody uh, who has joined us for the prayer and as we pray together. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 is going to be our, our theme text for the next uh, times that we're meeting together so as to share uh, the word of God. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Verse 2, set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. So I'm going to use an illustration uh, that is found in the word of God uh, to explain what we really are talking about. You see, friends, the word of God gives us the very purpose with which we live, the very reason why we exist, uh, the reason why God saved us from our sins. And the very primary foundation with which God saved us, he saved us so that we may be able to serve. There is nobody who was ever saved so that they can be idle and not do anything. Every person that has been saved has been saved so that they can serve. So it's an old time religion that says that served so that we may be served. So if we are to serve, the only reason and the primary reason why we are serving is because God has saved us. Now I want you to watch this so that you understand what I'm talking about when we're dealing with missions. You see, the Bible uh, speaks of a story of a certain man who the rest of his life was known as a thief. In fact, the Bible even calls him a malefactor, uh, a robber, and one person who used to steal, kill, and do anything for the purposes of their own self, uh, you know, uh, gratification. In everything that this person did, or in everything that this man did, he had one chance that God offered him so that he can join in the mission of Jesus Christ. So life as it has, it had him go every place that he could, found friends that he could have had, had all the joy that he could have had. You know, he had all his affections on the things of the earth. And everything that he ever did was the desire of his heart. And it was to please self and to please friends and to just have the joys and the thrills of this world. But if you look closely, life brought him to the purposes of, um, <clears throat> of falling into the very, very depths of, of the consequences of his sins. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. And the gift of God uh, is life eternal through Jesus Christ. So therefore this man, because he had gone out and he had done everything to please his heart. The Bible then says, because the wages of sin is death, then death awaited him. Got arrested with one of his friends and he was thrown into prison. Was condemned and he was judged that he was going to die. Still in the prison cells did not find a ray of hope still in the prison cells, did not find any chance that he was going to be saved. As time would have it, he was then taken and he was placed into condemnation and he was judged and he was sentenced to death. They dragged this man and they went with him to the place where he was going to meet his death. Alas, my brothers and sisters, this man was placed side by side with the Savior, Jesus Christ. And the scripture says, as you may read in the book of Luke, chapter 23. If you're going to turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 23, and you will understand something with me right there from verse 39. Luke, chapter 3, from verse 39. This is what the Bible says in Luke, chapter 3, from verse 39. 
It says there, and I will read in your hearing from the King James Version. It says, and one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. And the scripture says in verse 40, But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God? Sing thou art in the same condemnation. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. Verse 42. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. 43. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. To bring this matter into a conclusion, friends, I want you to notice two very important things when we're dealing with mission. Number one, Christ or God does not compromise on his principles. His principles is that when we are saving men, we are saving men so that he may be able to serve. And the inspired writings tell us that there is no, <clears throat> the inspired writings actually tell us that there is not even a single person who will be taken to heaven without a missionary spirit. And so as life would have it, here is a man who is about to die, but his death is so close that his salvation is even closer. And as he draws near to the point of death, God in his goodness offers him a moment to join in into the heavenly mission. And so while the other thief says to Christ, while the other thief says to Christ in Luke chapter 23, right there, while the other thief says to Christ, if you are the Christ, save us, this thief turns back and rebukes him pounces on the opportunity to present the everlasting gospel to the other thief and goes into missionary spirit and he begins to minister to the other thief and tells him about the goodness of God and tells him about the salvation that God has and changes the prayer instead of a prayer that says, if you are Christ, but he prays and he says, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus looks at this thief. He is qualified for heaven. For a missionary spirit was developed in him. And he witnessed to the other thief. And after witnessing, turns to Christ. And Christ saves him at that very last minute. My prayer for you, friends, is to understand that God will go to greatest lengths so that he may save us of our sins. He will go to greatest lengths so that he may join us in our journey. But what is significant and important is despite whatever that is happening in our lives, despite the busy schedules, despite the work appointments, despite the meetings that we have, let us remember to join in the mission of God and forget your cross for a minute. Forget your cross for a minute and turn your eye to someone else who is dying and tell them about the goodness of God. It is in that moment that God will save you and the person that you are witnessing to. Our prayer should not be, if you are Christ, do this for me. If you are Christ, save, uh, save my marriage. If you are Christ, give me a job. If you are Christ, heal me of this sickness. If you are Christ, for the prayer of a wicked man starts by saying, if you are Christ. The word if there is a word of doubt. If you are a child of God, you don't start approaching God saying, if you are God. Just like a child would not come before you as a mother, as a father, and say, if you are my mother, pay for my fees. If you are my, my mother, do this for me. No, they don't do that. They come to you and they will say, mom remember you're supposed to take me to school remember you said you would do this and that just like the thief on the cross says lord remember me in your kingdom may god bless us may god help us in our busy schedule 
to turn to God and come before him with confidence and come before him with faith, knowing that he will fulfill whatever promise that he has given to us. I'll take this moment and take it back uh, to our host so that they may lead us in the next segment. Thank you so much, my pastor. That was beautiful. And I always say, what do you believe God for? With that being said, my pastor, can you please do a closing prayer for us? Yes, let us pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. We thank you for drawing our affections towards heaven to consider nothing on this earth but to put our affections on the things that are above. Right now, as we close this session and moving on to the next session, I want to present your children that are scattered around all over the world, but that are saying, God, today is a new day. What can we do to join in the mission that you have given us? Is there a dying soul next to us? Is there someone in need at work? Whichever place that I am on my way to work, while I'm at work, at school, whichever place that I am, Lord, give me the missionary spirit so that somebody somewhere may be saved. I know when you help me save, I know definitely my prayers will be answered as well. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Amen, amen. Thank you.